this time of year, the woods are filled with this sweet, almost honey-like scent. So we've come to Lee Woods in Bristol to find the alchemist of this very wonderful perfume. I found the culprit of this pretty amazing smell. It's this beautiful display of bluebells. We've adored this flower for centuries. I mean, the Bronze Age people used to use the sap to glue feathers to their arrows, and the Tudors used to crush them and use the starch to stiffen their collars. They're even ingrained in our British folklore. It was said if you ever heard a bluebell ring, it was a sign from the fairies of your imminent death. And if you could turn a flower inside out without ripping the petals, it was a sign that you were about to meet the love of your life. But it's our deep-rooted love for this flower that is threatening their very existence here in Britain. Amongst our carpets of blue, there's an invader and it definitely should not be there. This is a non-native Spanish bluebell. It has larger, paler flowers which are arranged all around the stem. It also has this distinctive blue pollen and no smell at all. It's very different to our native varieties here. They're darker in colour and all the flowers seem to droop to one side. They also have cream pollen, but one of the reasons why I like them so much is because their petals seem to curl really tightly at the end and you can really see why people used to call them fairy flowers. You could just imagine it's the skirt of a fairy. The arrival of the Spanish bluebell can be traced back to about 1683. It was brought in as an ornamental plant because people were so enthralled by these wild displays they wanted to replicate it in their own backyard. But the British bluebell was too hard to grow, so the Spanish variety was the best alternative. Gradually though, it escaped people's gardens and it started turning up in the wild. Prior to this, these two species have been growing in complete isolation. Now they're living alongside one another. They're cross-pollinating, producing fertile hybrids. And unfortunately, the hybrids grow more vigorously than both their parents. So you could end up with a whole population of hybrids and the original genetic material of the British bluebell could be completely lost from our woods. Our native bluebells are also found all across Europe, but about 25 to 50% of the entire world's population of this one species are found here in Britain, which means this conservation threat is now on a global level. The British bluebell has been growing here since the last ice age, so we can actually use them as a bioindicator of ancient woodland. They seem to be intrinsically linked to the weather, they seem to know when to burst into life before any other woodland plant can take over. So we can use our British bluebell woods to track the effects of climate change. We've been recording when they flower for many years and it's shown us that springtime is getting earlier and earlier. If the hybrids take over, they have a completely different ecology. So we could lose the ability to track climate change in the same way. So we now have a global responsibility to conserve our British bluebells in our woods. Whenever a non-native species starts taking over habitats, like the Spanish and the hybrid, you always run the risk of there being a catastrophic effect on biodiversity. Certain insects and bees heavily rely on the bluebell as a reliable food source in springtime. So if you remove all British bluebells and replace them with another species, this could have a whole knock-on effect on the ecosystem. So there you have it. A few hundred years worth of gardening has put the worldwide future of this flower at risk. Thanks for watching and make sure you click the link to subscribe.